back to another edition of Songs of the Ozarks, a project of the Ozark Studies Institute, an ongoing initiative of the Missouri State University Library. My name is Emily Flatness, and today's date is February 28, 2023. I'm here today at the home of David Warren and Kathy Warren in Lampy, Missouri, and our special guest is David Warren. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. I love it. <laughs> and having me here in your beautiful home. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh... First of all, are you from the Ozarks originally? Yes, I'm from Shannon County, a little town called Illinois, Missouri. And that's where I grew up. That's how I learned to play when I was a very young kid. Really? Because I love, especially fiddle music. And down there, square dancing every Friday and Saturday night went on when I was a kid. So There was a lot of music in Shannon County yes. when you were a kid, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, I played on a show that was called the Current River Opry. And, uh, wow. All local talent down there. Of course, we had a lot of Nashville stars come up there and put shows on. But I started on it when I was like 12 years old and uh, just a kid and played on it until I left down there when I graduated from high school. So. How'd you first get started playing music? Yeah, actually, I guess I'd have to say in church. Pentecost Church that I went to across the road from our house and of course we had a lot of music in there and one of the ladies in there her name was Bessie Keeling and I, I had a little old uh, like, is a Roy Rogers guitar it's actually like a cardboard guitar my oldest sister had got me and I wanted to learn to play and it, all my years of growing up I'd go with Ben Franklin stores and mom would get me them little plastic guitars and I was always a run, beating on them and then uh, Bessie told me one time, bring my guitar to church, and she'd show me the chords. So she started doing that. And they would actually take time between songs for her to come down there. I was sitting on the altar benches. She'd actually come down there, show me the finger position for the three chords they were going to sing. No in. kidding. And I'd sit down there and watch her change, and then I would start trying to change. And it didn't take very long. I had it picked up. Then I got that guitar. Oh, really? It was ordered out of an Alden's catalog, and that's what I started on. And then, oh, I'd say a year, year and a half, then Mom got me an electric guitar, and I started on that. Then I started playing, going with the Keeling Quartet, which was Bessie's family, and played guitar with them. Wow. Then it just kept going from there, from friends down there that played music. So I've played ever since I was... Started when I was about nine years old. Wow. So. Did your mother and dad play music? No, I'm the only one really? in my family. Not, now, I did, I, I never got to meet him, but I had a great grandpa that was a fiddle player. And that's as far as I know, that's the only one in my whole family. Wow. That, that played any music. Um, so, did your folks sing? Or no, no, wow, really. you're I'm kidding the only me. one. <laughs> <laughs> um, why do you think there is so much music that went on in Shannon County? There wasn't nothing else really to do down there. <laughs> you could work and go to the dances and, and learn. There's a lot of musicians coming out of that part of the country. Wow, and in fact, right now. Even Michael Cleveland's banjo player is one of them. Wow. Roy Lee Bond that plays with Root Three is one of them. Oh, man, there's Jim Orchard. Everybody knew Jim Orchard. He taught most of these kids how to play. He and really uh, and even uh, with the Poor Ramblin' Boys, uh, B BJ. BJ, I believe mm -hmm. it is. He's another one of his students. And there's a lot of them around that come down there that now some of them's playing big time. Yeah. So. Um, so dancing, it's not really a tradition that has lasted as much as music has. Why do you think that is? I don't really know. I, can't <laughs> you. I know down there, I mean, just a lot of people, they love music and everything. Yeah. So that was one thing they got where they could do was dance, so... Most is generally about when I was growing up as a teenager, almost every Friday and Saturday night, there was a square dance someplace down there. Mm -hmm. And that's what actually got me really into my kind of music. It was 
playing for them. Of course, I started out you know, playing for the dances, and uh, and then I, of course, I got where I could dance when I was just a kid. I like swinging them pretty girls around. So. <laughs> then uh, later on, I got and they started paying you to play for them. So then I got to playing for the dances. So. And I supported a car and everything, playing music when I was a teenager wow. in school. So. No kidding. Yeah. Um. So you're a dancer yourself, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit. I'm getting pretty old, but I still try. I love to, <laughs> love to jig a little bit. Tell me a little bit about um, the style of music you play the most, and maybe a little bit about your dancing style too. Well, the music is just mostly what I do is actually. Just regular down to earth hardcore bluegrass is what I like. The old Bill Monroe flat and scrub stuff. And I've got a pretty good collection of all of the old records and stuff. And if, I, if we go back, that's why I, I've got such a collection of them. If we have a song we can't come up with, I can usually dig it out someplace mm -hmm. and get the words and stuff too because I've got the, the albums right down there mm -hmm. and the collection. And then... Uh, the dancing part, I really don't know. I just, when I was a kid, I just got where I, I could keep time with my feet. And I got where I'd get up when I was a little bitty kid. I mean, I was, before I ever started playing music, I could jig. And mm -hmm. I'd put a fiddle tune on and start jigging in the house. And Mom always said that she'd get the floors all waxed and me and my sister would scratch them back up again. <laughs> the sister that's nine years older than me, she can jig pretty good too so mm -hmm. we can get up and do it but I'm the youngest one in the family so the rest of them was pretty well gone and I grew up more or less as an only child just about <laughs> so uh so well darn what was I gonna ask you <laughs> oh it was kind of uh your own made-up version or did you learn it from old timers mostly the jigging mm-hmm no, I just watching them, I guess yeah. I would say, more than anything. Yeah. And, and watch, I always liked to see how light on their feet they could be. And <laughs> some of them could really do it and was really good at it. So. Um, I've noticed, this is kind of just a personal question, I've noticed that whenever folks dance, their upper body is kind of, kind of stays in the same place. Yeah. And they just use their feet. Yep, that's... I found that really interesting. Yeah, that's part of it. I don't really know. Everybody, a lot of people ask me, so what style do you do? And I say, you flat foot or do you... All, you know, the buck dance. Buck dance, yeah. you know, all that. I said, all I, we ever called it was just jig dance. And yeah. That's all I don't really know. But so, I don't know. I know a lot of them I see, they just, all their movements are feet, more or less. But yeah. I more pretty much move my whole body most of the time. So Yeah. Um, so when did you decide to leave Shannon County? Well, if you stay down there when you get out of school, you better be able to run a chainsaw because you're going to have to work in the timber. Oh, yeah. And that's hard work. So most of the kids down there when they graduate, they go to either St. Louis or Springfield or go to the city somewhere else to get a, a good job. And I was lucky enough to come up and get hard on it and the Fresco Railroad. So I put 22 years in on, as a railroader. That's a lot of years. And uh, then, of course, I hurt my back. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but I, I still do pretty good. I, and for my age, I still love to dance when mm -hmm. I can. I just can't do it very long anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, neither can I, and I'm 22. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anywhere you went, um, was it easy to find musicians who played bluegrass in old time like you do? Most of the time, and I grew up actually when I was playing for the dances down there. There was about three fiddle players in my area down there that was pretty well known as dance fiddle players. Mm. One of them's name was Charlie Martin, and he played for almost all the old square dances there around the Eminence. And then, uh, and I played a lot with him when I was a kid. And of course, I loved to go watch some of the dances when they'd get to dancing. And of course, a lot of times they'd go nip the bottle a little bit and they'd be <laughs> oh, a fight yeah. before the night was over. So. Oh, <laughs> but the next day, they was all friends again. <laughs> it was just a lot of fun. 
but Charlie would play fiddle, I played guitar, and uh, then another guy that played banjo, his name was Roger Smith, he done a lot of the banjo work, but a lot of times it'd just be the three of us. Really? And then there was another one I played with some, his name was Pat Hutchison, and, uh, and then another one from Mountain View, Missouri, that come down and played for a lot of times was, his name was Ansel Gore. Huh. But they were some of the fiddle players that done a lot of dance music down there. What um what style of banjo mostly did they play for the dances? Well, one of them down there, which would have been like a third or fourth cousin to me, his name was Laurel Warren. Now, he played a Fralin banjo. Really? Just an old four string. But most of them had five string and picked it. They'd play more yeah. bluegrass style? Yeah. What would you say is the difference between uh, bluegrass and old time music? That's a hard question. It to is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, it, I don't really know how to answer that. On the, I just the bluegrass. It to me, it's a little more hard driving. Oh yeah. Most generally, that's yeah. my style anyway. Is, and then uh, the old time is. It's mostly, a lot of times, that's just done with fiddles and maybe a guitar and maybe a, a frailing banjo. Mm -hmm. But most of the down-to-earth bluegrass is the finger-picking the banjo and, and doing the old uh, flat scrubs, Bill Monroe, the old regular bluegrass style. Yeah. There is a difference in the old-style fiddle playing and bluegrass fiddle, oh, in my yeah. opinion. Some folks say now that... Um Sometimes jazz is a big influence in new bluegrass styles. Yeah, this new style, it's different. It is. <laughs> I call it rock and roll bluegrass. Oh, I think that's the best term I've heard to describe yeah. it. Uh, in these dance musicians, was there ever a singer or was it always just instrumental music? That most of the time it was instrumental, and some of the dances we had down there, if there was somebody that could call, they'd be up there calling. But we didn't have very many callers. But when I was growing up, we had one, an old man there in the eminence. His name was Tom Conway. He usually called it a lot of them, and he's about the only one I can remember that really got up there and called the dances. Really. Most of the time, when they were going through the sets, they'd done it so much, they just knew their moves. They didn't have to have a call. No kidding. Yeah, back, uh, it would have been in the, I guess in the 60s, maybe mid to late 60s. Usually about once a year, they they actually roped the street off, Main Street in Elminence, and routed the traffic around the courthouse, and they had a big dance down there, right in the Main Street of 19 really? Highway. And we played, the musician was on the courthouse steps playing the, the music. No kidding. <laughs> and, they, and it was big enough in there, they were, sometimes they might be, I'm guessing, eight, ten squares going at one time. So. Oh my goodness. I can't even imagine what that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody in Shannon County was there just about. I mean, any anything big down there that went on, because there was nothing to do down there. Yeah. And everybody would come in for stuff like that. How did... Everybody hear the music if there were so many squares. I like we had a microphone up. Oh, there. you we, did? Oh yeah, we had a, enough. It, we never did have much of a PA system, but we had enough. enough. Uh, and sometimes, uh, I, well, I can't really remember. Once in a while, they would have a, a pickup on their fiddle and stuff, but most time we had a, just like one mic or something up there to help carry it. And the fiddle yeah. was the main thing, so you had mm -hmm. to beat the guitar to to get any volume <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, is calling a square dance in the style that you um, used, was it pretty difficult? Uh, well, yeah, it was for me because I didn't know what they are talking about half the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to kind of follow the crowd when oh, they yeah. were doing it. But, uh, uh, if I could, uh, but the thing of it is, I didn't stay with that very long because yeah. I started. I found out I could play for these things and make money instead of be down there dancing. So I started doing that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> how how did folks back then um, teach each other fiddle tunes and um, get new tunes? 
Well, the only thing I could figure out on getting the new ones, they had to learn them from one of the old heads or yeah. if some of them that did have the old records like I've got. And mm -hmm. That's how I actually, when I started, really got into learning how to play, I learned to, I always told everybody I was an A number one tuner because I could sit there and soon a lot of your old albums, it wasn't in a standard pitch yeah. back then. And every time the song would start, I could sit there and tune with it within 35, 40 seconds. And then really? I'd like set the arm back and started playing with them. Then. And then I, that's how, I, anytime I had to learn a new song, that's how I learned almost all of them off of the records. I can't hardly figure, how was anybody in tune back then? <laughs> Whenever they played together. Well, that was the, when I was started playing, the... I didn't have, I mean, I didn't have it to own a tuner until, oh, yeah. I'd say, early 2000s. And, but when I was living down there, we just lived across the road from the church house. And if I wanted to get in standard pitch, before I started playing harmonica, then I could use it and get standard pitch. If I wanted to tune my guitar in standard pitch, I went up over, to, over across the road to the church house to the piano. And I'd oh, hit, yeah. I'd hit the E on the piano, tune the guitar to it, and then I'd go back to the house and start playing. So. That's pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we get in standard pitch, because I knew playing at the church, I knew how to get tuned with the piano all the time. So. Yeah. We're so spoiled now. Um, oh, yeah. With our tuners, and I've never known playing music without YouTube to look things up on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's how I, if I had a song I had heard on the radio or heard at a show that I wanted to learn, we would go to, usually about once a month, we went to Salem, Missouri. For, really? Uh, that was uh, one of the bigger towns down there. We would go up there, spend a, on Saturday, we'd go up there and do our major shopping stuff because there wasn't a lot of stuff in Eminence. Yeah. So we would go up. We lived north of Eminence so we were closer to Salem than we were in any of the other big towns. Huh. So we would go up there and there was a music store up there called Caps Music Store and Glenn Caps was the old man that owned it. As soon as we got there, mom would start shopping and I'd get out and head to that music store. I'd go down there and I was just a little kid, but Glenn took a liking to me. So we'd go down, and he could play anything he picked up. We'd go to the music store, we'd sit there and play music all, just almost all day while mom and dad was shopping. <laughs> <laughs> they knew where I was at. Right. <laughs> and uh, I'd go in there and pick up, he'd hand me some of the high dollar guitars. I was just a little kid, and I'd sit there and play them, and he'd play with me. He was a good musician. Really? Uh, well, I, that's where I went all the time. That's where my, a lot of my first instruments come from, is the, that music store. Now, you play a variety of instruments. Kind of. I don't, I mainly I'm on guitar anymore, mm -hmm. but I did play fiddle for, I'd say, 15 years, I guess, for the Bluegrass Buck Jumpers. And uh, then I learned to play, the funny thing was, my brother used to, he's 11 years older than me, and he was living in the city, living, at that time he lived in St. Louis. Oh, wow. And he, oh, he wanted to play so bad. Well, he come down two different times. First time he come down and he had a, I think that's when he had that old four string banjo, or it might have been a five string, I don't even remember now. But he bought it in a pawn shop. And he, he didn't even tell me he had it for several months. Then finally, he comes down one week and brought it down there, and he said, here, see if you can do anything with that. Well, I could usually take anything with strings on it and get a tune out of it, so I got tinkered with it and got it, I didn't even know how to tune it, but I tuned it in something, it probably wasn't good, <laughs> and played, I think, Cripple Creek on it. So when he got ready to leave, he said, I took, went and got it, so I didn't take it home, and he said, just keep it, I can't play it. So I ended up with it, then he done the same thing with a mandolin. He brought a mandolin down then one time the same way. And and uh, I tuned it up, played uh, Soldier's Joy or something on it. So I ended up with it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that's how I got started on a lot of different instruments. Yeah. And then the fiddle was, that was the hardest instrument of any of them. And the finger work wasn't so hard, but learning to do the bow it was yeah. really hard. And uh, the first fiddle I had, 
I had an uncle that had a jewelry store in Wyoming, Missouri, and he was his jewelry store was in a a furniture store and a used kind of this guy kind of dealt with used stuff. He went down there one Saturday to see Uncle Bill, and uh, the guy that owned the furniture store had an old fiddle hanging up, and it was terrible old fiddle, soundless, <laughs> worthless. And I know he won fifteen dollars for it. My dad said. I picked up was looking at it. He said, Thank you, you learned to play that. Of course, my dad loved the fiddle. Really? I said, I don't know. Well, anyway, he ended up buying it for me. Well, that was my first fiddle. I really don't even know what I've done with it. I probably traded it for something <laughs> better. But that was my first fiddle. And so I got where I could play it a little bit, and then I ended up with a better one after that. And now, of course, over in the corner, I've got a bunch of them. <laughs> You've been cursed with it. Yeah. A bunch of fiddles. <laughs> of course, I've got, uh, I guess, three or four that's my favorites that I, I don't sell. But I've got several over there that I fix up and sell. So I love It's just a hobby that I like yeah. to do. It's a good one. Yeah. It's, a, it's a necessary one <laughs> for us fiddle players. Yeah, I've got, I'm well blessed with music instruments. Yeah. Um... What are some of like the first fiddle tunes you learned that they danced to and stuff? Well, most of them would have been such as 8th of January, oh, yeah. Sally Gooden, uh, probably Soldier's Joy. And that's some, I mean, back then when I was just first learning, I probably didn't know a half a dozen tunes mm -hmm. that we played when we was playing for the dances. But... Like I said, most of the time when I first started playing for the dance, I wasn't playing fiddle, I was playing guitar. And I, I actually got on the fiddle a little bit later on when I started playing it more. Yeah. And uh, now I'm almost ashamed to play it. I, that's how bad it got. It's oh. one of them deals that if you lay it down oh, and don't yeah. pick it up for a while, and then you pick it up and you forgot what you used to know. <laughs> Especially when you play other instruments that are so different yeah. most of the time, yeah. And I come down here, every jam session I went to when I moved down here was loaded with fiddlers. Oh, we got yeah. a lot of all of those kids, everybody, there was fiddle players everywhere. But they needed a guitar player, so I started just playing rhythm most of the time and let them do the fiddle work, so I just got away from it, kind of. That's my mostly on yeah. guitar now. Uh... Yeah. What kind of places did you jam whenever you moved down here? Oh, Lord, the one we went to so many, the, most of the years was T Highway, where really? all the kids are. And, and the others, I don't know, we've just... McDowell. McDowell, that oh. went for a long time. That was one we played several years. We went over there and played. And uh, down in, uh, around the Arkansas and Rogers area down in there, you know, there's some jams down there we went to. That's where a lot of our friends live down in that mm -hmm. area. We jammed down in there. And then, uh, of course, one place I played when I was still with the buck, buck Jumpers, we played one Saturday night a month at, I don't do you know where Foose is at? Huh? North, north of Fairgrove, between Fairgrove and Buffalo. It's just a community called Foos, and it was an old school building. And they had a music deal there. This uh, They had other groups that come in there sometimes. So we played there once a month. And wasn't no pay. We just done it for free, but we always had a crowd there. Really? We, I drove all the way from down here up there when, wow. when we done that. But we done that for, I know, seven or eight years. The that sounds grass, like a place I grass grass love. Jumpers. Once yeah. a month? Yeah. Uh, that T Highway, that's the schoolhouse jam you're talking about? Yeah. 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 Oh, it looks, I can't wait to go out there soon. Um, What about McClurg? Did you ever go to McClurg? Went there one time, and it was more just strictly fiddle playing. Oh, yeah. It wasn't, I mean, the fiddle players more or less had that jam. You go over there to play for them. Yeah, it's more, it's more old time, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it is. And I'm more, I want to play, I'm more into the bluegrass stuff. So yeah. That wasn't my style. I mean, I love the fiddle music, but if I'm going to play, I'd want to get them into more of the singing and stuff. And mm -hmm. there's not much of that goes on over there. Oh, yeah. Um, we, certainly. Yeah, we went to jams all over the place down here. 
Some of them we like, some of them we didn't. So we, <laughs> I, I kind of like the, the ones that's got more of our bluegrass style music in. Yeah. Them. And a lot of them down here have got, got more country in them than they do the bluegrass. So. How'd you get started playing with the Buck Jumpers? <laughs> that's kind of a funny story. I was playing with uh, a group called Waterloo Boy. Where did you really? Yeah, I did, didn't like. I wasn't with them very long. But yeah. anyway, it was just played with them. They was wanting a fiddle player, so I started playing with them. And I don't know, I probably wasn't with them a couple months. But we was actually, it's kind of funny. We were uh, playing. At, there was an old church house in Marshfield that they changed into a theater and they were having music shows there. Yeah. So I was with them at the time and of course these guys, the Hard Times Bluegrass, which was Don Million, Joe Young, a bunch of them, they had that band together for years and oh. I knew them. And Jill Williams, our bass player right up there, was one of them. And Bill Austin, the one, the one on the mandolin right there, they played with them. So I went over to with Waterloo Boy one night to play. And Jill's dad was the fiddle player for him, and he got cancer and died oh, about yeah. a month before that. Well, I knew the guys, and I jammed with them a little bit. And so Bill come up to me, and he said, Hey, would you play fiddle for us tonight? I said, Yeah, I don't care. So I went out there with them. Well, I... I don't know, I think maybe the Waterloo boys didn't want me playing with anybody else or something. Oh, yeah. So the next day they called me and said, oh, they was going to try to make it without a fiddle player. So. Oh, no. <laughs> and the funniest thing, Bill up there had told me that night after I played for him, he said, you ever need a job playing fiddle, just call me. So that was about 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon. I called him up. I said, hey, I just got fired. You need a fiddle player? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good deal right there. <laughs> and, oh, he laughed. He laughed for 15 minutes. Oh so I played with them then for, like I said, for at least 15, 16 years we were wow. together. We had a ball. We done. We played a couple of shows at the Houston radio station and uh, live shows. We went down there and done. Well, we got to know Gene Skinner. Oh, you know what Gene. a great guy. Gene is one of my buddies. But anyway, we got to know Gene and several of them down there. So they got they called me every now and then. And they said, hey, we had somebody call us wanting to know a band they could hire to come and play for a family reunion. So we got the, they got the, well, you might say the Houston radio station started booking us, I guess you'd say. <laughs> <laughs> and they called and asked me, and then they They'd give people my phone number. We, oh, we got a lot of shows. They were like your booking agent. Yeah. <laughs> and I got to know Gene very well. Oh, and, uh, yeah. and His wife is my math teacher oh, really? in school. Yeah. Yeah, I love her too. Yeah. How about Souders? And Souders Store, have you ever heard of it? Mm -mm. It's between Ava and, well, actually, if you go to it off of five highway and take 95 towards mountain road and it's up in there it was an old country store years ago and uh they sold i mean i think they sold everything there it was in fact it's on a gravel road and they really? used to sell feed and they had and then denise and dennis souder which was their i think it was their grandparents that actually owned it they ended up buying it and putting a big restaurant or a restaurant in there and started having live music in there. And we got hard down there. I went down there one night for, they jammed every Friday night and Saturday nights they had music show. They had, they'd hire one man to come in on Saturday nights and play. We got paid and fed, of course, always got fed. I've got a cap that says I play for food. <laughs> but we always got fed and, and got paid we go down there and do that show. But I got I went down there on Friday night and jammed and got to know Dennis and, and Denise and got to be friends with them. Well, they ended up hiring us for one Saturday night a month. Really? To play. And they had several different groups to come in there, you know, and play. But we were one of the regulars that had one Saturday night a month that we played there. And that... What, in fact, the, the night was really big. We done a live show that day at the Houston radio station. 
and they let us advertise. Oh it. yeah. We got down there that night. We like not have enough food to eat. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> that place was packed. Really. And uh, in fact, that's where I met my wife. Was down there. Really. And her uh, sister, the right uh, the young, just younger than her. They, I guess they kind of uh, heard her husband kind of set this up with me. <laughs> and they had her come up and they brought her down there one night and that's where we met and then you can see what I ended up with ever that's since a good sister. <laughs> <laughs> so and then she'd never played music or been around this kind of music so she decided she wanted to play instead of just sitting in the audience because mm -hmm. she wasn't going to keep me from it so that's what she plays the upright bass I taught her how to play that and got her started so She's our bass player. Uh, did you guys ever play at the Old Field Opry? I played with the Bluegrass Buck Jumpers down there. You uh, did? Two or three times, yeah. It's been around a long time, yeah, hasn't it? Is. it? Yeah. Um. We played, I don't, I can't even remember. We used to play, you know, all your small towns have their like fall festivals mm -hmm. and stuff. We played a lot of them all over the place and that we get booked at every year. And it was just a lot of fun and that we we enjoyed doing. And we had, like I said, we, a lot of times we never got paid, but yeah. we'd do it for fun. Uh, something I know you love is festivals. Oh, yeah. What are some of the best festivals? Well, it used to be Sally Mountain. Yeah. But that is no longer. So, Starvey Creek, I guess, is one of our number ones now. Yeah. We love going down to uh, Beacon Park. It's a small one. Really? North of Harrison. Have you not been down no, there? No, I've never. Oh, you got to come down there. It's yeah, just a I small do. festival. We, is it local bands? Yeah. I love to hear local yeah. bands. Yeah, come down there and then you can jam with us. So. Oh, I will. <laughs> and, uh,. We go now, last year is our first year to go to Turkey Track in the fall, oh, so yeah. we'll probably be down there. And we went a few times to the back 40, mm -hmm. went up there. It was a good festival, but it's, uh, we 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 do so many of them, we can't yeah. go to all of them. And then we do, we go to Mountain View, Arkansas a lot and uh, go down there. But we down there, you never know what you're going to end up with down there. So That's the truth. <laughs> yeah. We go down there some weekends. We love it. We'll find some of our bluegrass pickers and, and yeah, really have some good jams. And then there's other times we go down there and we we have been down there a time or two. We didn't even take our music, our instruments out of the case. Really? Yeah. I wonder why so many young folk still play down there. I don't know, but they've they've really. I I think the folk center has, yeah. has helped a lot of it. It's because they have a lot of stuff going on mm -hmm. down there for them. The school. And and the, yeah, that's the other thing. The school down there teaches stringed instruments in it, and that's why just like Mary Parker and yes. all of them. I mean, they come out of there. They're excellent pickers. Oh, and they are. They picked most of them. I think picked it up in school. That folk center is great out there. Yeah. Um. Good music. Yeah. We, good traditions. Uh, yeah, we go down there. We usually camp out at Blue Sky uh, RV Park, just north of Mountain View, about four or five miles on Five Highway. She has a, I, I guess you call it a picking area in her office area back there. She got a big really? room back there. And we've, any time we're down there, especially if the weather's bad or anything, I just go tell her that we got a jam tonight. And she opens it up to us. And we go in there. We got a nice place in there to jam. Wow. And so we go down and do that sometimes. And our one thing we have a lot of fun with, we have some, we call them our Cajun buddies. <laughs> we, we met them down there. And they're uh, Audie Hunt. Jamie, uh, Jamie and Lisa, I don't know, I can't think of their last name. But anyway, they live in down in pretty much southern part of Louisiana. And we met them in Mountain View, and oh, they are fun to play with. Really? So we got to meeting with them down there every October, the weekend before the Bean Fest, and jamming. So we got to where if it was cold weather or rainy, we'd just stay out there at the RV park and go in there and, and jam.
jail. Oh yeah, that's a nice deal. Yeah. And we we got to do that. And so last year in October, I told them, I said, now, in fact, we went down to their place and jammed uh, a year ago. So I told them, I said, now, I come down here, you're gonna have to come to our place. So guess what? Last October, they spent a week out in No the kidding. We had this room of bellering every night. <laughs> <laughs> Is there Louisiana style a lot different from? Oh yeah, it's actually, really? it's actually a lot of, I mean, they can do some bluegrass. Jamie mm -hmm. is pretty good at the bluegrass. He does more bluegrass. Audie's more Cajun. Really? And he does a lot of your old Jimmy C. Newman Cajun stuff and everything. But he's, we have, they are so much fun to play with. And, and he'll get, put that, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but they spent a week here with us. We jammed wow. every night. Is there still a lot of uh, tourists who go to Mountain View looking for the music? Yeah, it's, I don't think it's like it was, I'd say 15 years ago. Yeah. But there's, I think the crowd is less than what it was then because, Back then, we used to go down there with my buck jumpers. We'd go down there every year, and you just played on the courthouse square. They didn't yeah. have the gazebos, and it was, I mean, you couldn't walk on there sometimes. They'd just be bands, you know, it's different, find a place under a tree or something to go play. Gee whiz. And uh, it's, it's kind of different now than what it was then. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of bluegrass and barbecue? Oh, we love it. Yeah. If they, if they didn't have that, we probably wouldn't even buy Silver Dollar City passes. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's what we go over there for. Yeah. They've got good bands that come oh, through yeah. there. Yeah. Did you guys ever go whenever um, they used to have bands just play under the trees oh, and yeah. stuff? Yeah. Yeah, it's changed a lot since then. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have too many of them scattered around in there now. Uh -huh. They're all under in one of the buildings or mm -hmm. under the gazebo or something. That's about it. Yeah. And so, yeah, I used to go over there in the fall of the year to see Violet Hensley. Oh, she's great. And, oh, it was so funny. After she was getting up in the years, her daughter would always bring her. And uh, I'd go over there walk up of course Violet was getting where she couldn't see good mm -hmm. she'd be sitting there and her daughter always had a guitar sitting there so I'd walk in her daughter would look at me and grin so she'd get up and move and I'd reach back and get her guitar and I'd strum that thing and Violet would jump like that <laughs> and look and grin and she'd grab her fiddle and here oh we go my goodness. and boy so I mean she played it fast now. really <laughs> And we'd sit there, we'd have a whole crowd out there listening, and we'd sit there and play for maybe 30 minutes or something. Just play, you know, that's about it, so. That's something I've heard about good fiddlers. They're particular about their guitar players. Yes. <laughs> yep, that's what got me doing guitar down here. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many, as I guess you say guitar players, I don't know what it is. If they didn't grow up with fiddle music, some of them can't hardly play rhythm to a fiddle. Oh, yeah. They have a hard time with it. Well, I grew up with them. And, I mean, I had their, if it's a song I've not heard, I mean, it, it might be hard for me, but most of your regular old fiddle tunes, I can figure them out. Yeah. Unless they've got a lot of crooked changes. Oh, in them. yeah. <laughs> some of them waltzes have. Oh, they do. <laughs> I can't hardly even sometimes understand them when I'm listening to them. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> but I like just the old standard stuff. That's my I favorite. Too. I'm a, I guess you'd say I'm a Kenny Baker fan. Oh, yeah. yeah. They don't make them much better when it's, well, Bill Monroe used to say that Kenny Baker was the best bluegrass best fiddler that ever walked. <laughs> I think that probably is still the case. Yeah. <laughs> At least in the style we're speaking of. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I got to, I never did get to really jam with Kenny, but I got to meet him two or three oh, different times. Oh, really? Yeah. Is he pretty down to earth? Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 He was, seemed like a pretty good old boy. Yeah. Um. But one of my favorites right now, I'll have to say, if he gets to see this, I'll have to brag <laughs> on him, is Jason Berry. Yeah. Joe Mullins' fiddler. He is fabulous. We, we thank the world of him. 
And I loved it when he stood right there where that seat is sat and played uh, Road to Columbus with my oh, old fiddle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to send this to him whenever. Okay. <laughs> he can do it. <laughs> um, yeah, there's so many good old fiddle tunes that Kenny Baker came up with and made popular. Oh, yeah. Still played all the time. I've got most of them on a CD yeah. or a cassette tape. <laughs> well, I think that's all the questions I have. Do you have anything else that... That's you know all that? I can think of. you got to <laughs> ask me everything I know to I put did. out. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to um, dance and play a little bit? Okay. I'll be killed. Here's the... Here, do you want to say something about it? Well, that's the one that come out of the Alden's catalog. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it was... Probably would have been like six, 1962, because that's when I was nine years old. And that's when I actually started playing. 1962 Ooh. and 63 is when I was starting. So, <laughs> I think we, it seemed to me like mom gave like 15.95 or something for that. Wow. And, it, and it had a case and everything. But the case finally just was disintegrated. Looks like you wrote your name in there too, David Moore yeah. David is there <laughs> Oh, that's great. But if you can look around in here, you know this, let's see the Dobro over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> made out of a dish pan. Oh my word. And of course that's one of those musical hand saws. Right. right <laughs> and what else? Well that right there used to be, of course there's Rhonda. Yeah. <laughs> that used to be what I had to imitate Tiny Tim with really? when I was uh, just probably 16 years old on the Kurt River Opry. Oh my and goodness. And my sister was next to older than me. Has she got a? She was a beautician in Springfield, so she got me one of them big long wigs. Do you ever remember <laughs> Tiny Tim? Uh -uh. See the pictures of him. I know you're too young. <laughs> well, he done that. I go dip the through the two clubs. <laughs> and, and I played heard a, that. And he played a ukulele. Really? So I was a, playing as the clown on the Opry. So that my sister got me that oh wig, my and, I, and my other sister, I think Norm, my oldest sister, got me that. Wow. And so that's what I played on there and done that. Well, I couldn't vibrate my voice, so I think Andy Bressler, when I was playing with the Bressler brothers, he used to come up behind me, reach over my shoulder, and he'd do that. Right <laughs> this was a CD. I think we made this probably in 03 or 04 and with the Bluegrass Buck Jumpers, the band I played with for so many years. And I was the fiddle player on it. So... I'll put Gold Rush on and dance to my own fiddle tune a little bit. <laughs> so, let me see if I can get it going. Who did Gold Rush originally? Was that a Byron Kenny Baker? Byron Oh, Bill yeah. Bill Monroe wrote it. In fact, I'll tell you that story. Okay. So, when did you guys record this album? <clears throat> did not we do that? Was we married when we done it or was that? Uh, right around the time we got married. So, it, we it may have been just... Probably, it may have been in 2003. Really? Yeah. Because we got married in 2004. Mm -hmm. So it may have been and in 2003. We've got an anniversary coming up pretty soon. Oh, congratulations. All right. Where is this? Yeah. Thing? It'll be your 20 years, won't it? No, 18. Next year it'll be? This oh, so two eight. more years and it'll be 20, 20. years. Yes. Gotcha. We were married, yeah, we were married in 04, so. Gotcha. <laughs>
Kind of missed the old band. Yeah. <laughs> now, what year was it all done, the band? We, uh, we started together in, I think it's probably 97. Really? And, oh, we, I guess you say we officially didn't really break up. It's just that we started losing our yeah. old man. I'm the oldest one of the whole group now. So, really? So there was two of them. Back last uh, September around Sarvey Creek, Jill, the bass player, mm -hmm. and Billy, the guitar player, come out there that night, and we got together and jammed that night. That was the first time we played together for, I don't know, a long time. Really? Mm -hmm. But it brought back the fact that I was on fiddle, and I said, man, I keep playing like I used to do. <laughs> but, but that's what I was playing out there, and it, Seem to come back. Yeah. Sometimes it does. <sighs> but there's a lot of them I can play with. That it's just not the same, you know, when yeah. you don't have it. We we played together for so many years. We knew every each one's move and whatever. We, in fact, I'm one of them. My nose would get itching sometimes. And Jill, the bass player, she always stood right behind me back here. I was being tough trying to play on doing that. <laughs> She'd stick her shoulder up there. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch my nose on her shoulder. Oh, my word. <laughs> and of course, everybody thought that was funny. Right. <laughs> we all, we were just like a big family. Yeah. Together. It is and, the best. You know about the Bill Monroe and uh, the tune? Oh, uh, uh, we went out in 2021. Me, Kathy, yeah. Dennis, and Connie. Yeah. We went to uh, Guthrie. Guthrie, Oklahoma, for Byron Burline to his music shop, music store, and jammed with him for three and a half, four hours. And uh, see, he when they wrote Gold Rush, they they did not put the it's F sharp minor, I think, in it. You know, the most everybody uses. Mm -hmm. And so he was going to do Gold Rush, and him and Bill wrote it. And I'm sitting there, of course, most everybody that I play with will always use that, I call it the E minor position. Mm -hmm. And I said something to him, I said, oh yeah, i got to remember, you don't put that E minor change in it, do you? And he said, you didn't hear it any when it was first recorded, did you? <laughs> <laughs> so I can't even imagine how it sounds without it. Well, it's, that's the original version without it. Wow. And, and he don't put it in. And that was what was funny. When we, I was playing guitar to it, and all of a sudden, right at the end of it, the last round with it, I couldn't help it. I put it in there <laughs> automatically because I'm so used to it. Boy, did I get a dirty look. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but we, did, we got to do a lot of that stuff. That made our day to get to go out yeah. and play with him. Then he died in September that year. Wow. <laughs> so... But I'm pretty happy to say that I've got to play with a lot of the, my heroes, I guess you'd say. Really? Just jam with them and stuff. I, I love doing it. Yeah. And But I got to know Jason really well. Really? Starby Creek. They used to come out there in, well, that would have been September because we wasn't there the 4th of July. But Joe Mullins used to have, he'd do two shows, two days out there. Well, they would spend the night. Well, the next morning, Jason would get up pretty early. He was bored. Well, I was selling instruments. I had a booth kind of set up at our camper. Oh, you did? My fiddles, yeah. So he got the first year he done it, he got wandering around. And he wandered in out there, and I was sitting there on the steps of the camper watching him out there. I knew who it was. And he was out there. He'd pick the fiddle up. I had about eight of them hanging out there. He'd pick one up. He'd hit a tune on it, hang it back up. Get another one. He went through all of them. And pretty soon he walks over there and he said, got some pretty good fiddles out there, but now I want to see the ones you want to sell. <laughs> so I got all of mine out. We got to sitting there, just the two of us. Got to playing, sitting there playing. And I was playing guitar to him. And he told me, he was playing all them old time fiddle tunes and stuff. He said, I love to do this, but he said, I, you know, I can't, don't get to do it when we're with Joe, you know, because we got to do his stuff. <laughs> right. And uh, but he said, I love to play these old hold downs. So we got to be good friends then. 
and I've got his number. We text one another. Every really? Once in a while, yeah. He's one of my <laughs> fiddle heroes, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but another one too that I think is very good, one of the best fiddlers I've ever played with is Dennis. Yeah. Dennis Pritchard. He is a very good fiddle player. He won't admit it, but he is. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the most humble people yeah. I've met. Right there was his chair when he comes out really? here jams with us, yeah. So Yeah, he's great. Um yeah, there's nothing like playing with him or listening to him. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, he uh, I most generally always do Uncle Penn because he has got it oh, down. Oh, yeah, he does. He can do it like it's supposed to be done. A lot of them yeah. can't do it right, but he can. He really can. <laughs> uh, would you want to play a little bit of guitar? Yeah. Would you want to play fiddle, too? Oh, I'm not much of a fiddle player. <laughs> I've got them. We, just, we can get them out and play a tune or two. Sure. You?
good love song. Love my heart. Don't get my heart. <laughs> I like that. Little oh, girly touch. Yes. Yeah. Huh. yeah, when we looked at this, we bought it. It's a medley bought it down at Poplar Bluff. And Luther Medley built, I think, about 400 of these. Oh, really? And he's dead now, but he had three of them in there. And one was blonde, this one, and had a pink one. And she said, I think I get the pink one. I said, you'd be playing it by yourself then. Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> I, I would have got one. the pink one, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a good old song. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. In fact, that's that. Well, as I got older, I got where I can't remember words, so I've got them all on a tablet. But that's one. I've got about five or six. I usually save till the last of the set, so if my battery goes dead, I can do oh, that. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Um. Yeah, that's one of the first. My dad downloaded a Bill Monroe album of like greatest hits or something like yeah. that. So that's one of the first bluegrass songs I ever heard. When well, I was you a kid. heard uh, the that CD or that they made Ricky Skaggs, I think, was one of them maybe produced the Travis Tritt down uh -huh. on Little Georgia Rose on it. Really? That's a Travis Tritt version. Really? You know, he, he had one of the best versions of it I've ever heard. Oh, that's neat. That. Y'all yeah, have to go listen to that. Have you guys ever been to Rosine? Yeah. That barn jamboree? No, I've never have been, been to Oh, it's I've been to so the whole fun. Place three times. Really? I think I've well, I would go for archery tournaments in high school. I did archery. Well, you done? Yeah. You were 22. You didn't mm -hmm. know Caden McCall, did you? Mm -mm. He went to Kickapoo. Oh, he, really? And did he, archery? Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he went to the state fair with it. Time really? Ago. He's my grandson. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Um, now yeah, he's, we, he's, we would always go there whenever yeah. we'd go to Louisville.
good song. That was great.